الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله to all the viewers uh, brother Muhammad here we're back at it again with another how I learn Arabic stories interview slash uh, conversation and I'm here with my yeah. brother Faisal all the way from nah. Holland and inshallah today he's going to share with us uh, how he learned Arabic and we're going to yes. be uh, you know exchanging uh, exchanging some nice words inshallah for the for the next 45 to 1 hour so tune in inshallah and let's get started so inshallah first of all i would like to uh, to say assalamu alaikum to the brother faisal wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ustad muhammad how are you akhi alhamdulillah nabi khair kayfa anta alhamdulillah nabi khair inshallah طيب ان شاء الله so الذي اريد منك الان I just want some hey. context and some, you know, some little background about yourself Backstory. and a little bit about yeah. yourself, inshallah. All right, perfect. That's no problem. So I'm uh, 24, 24 years old. I'm from Somali background, so I'm Somali. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have a bit uh, Yemeni in somewhere. Somewhere there's a bit Yemeni, but most Somalis have that. No, you're um, not, no. My grandma's actually. My grandma's Yemeni. But um, so basically, I was born here in Holland, raised here. I lived for about two years in Birmingham in the mm -hmm. UK. Okay. I moved there for about two years, but after that, I returned back to Holland. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up so basically, I'm just I just grew up here in Holland, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm studying IT right now. Just a student at university, I study computer science, mm -hmm. and that's what I did. That's what I do in my daily life. I study, I study and I teach Arabic right now. Mashallah, okay. that's nice. Mm -hmm. I'm actually so I'm actually interested about the IT as well, just to know about it because okay. I remember. Perfect. You know, I'm always, uh, but yeah, obviously, I'm not going to ask you in this interview. However, inshallah, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about that, inshallah. طيب, على كل حال. طيب, so, so how do you learn Arabic? That's the main question. <laughs> That's the main question. Uh, basically, um, how it all started was when I was like 16. I was trying to, uh, I was about 16, when I was 16 to 17. I started practicing, uh, practicing. Before that, I wasn't really practicing. And then when I started practicing, um, just like it's, it's, it's very similar to the uh, this part of the story. It's very similar to the story of Nastiha because mm -hmm. I listened to her interview as well. Mm -hmm. How she said like it was uh, drummed into us that like as soon as you like become religious, you're supposed to study the Quran, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's like it's like program inside of you. You go to Duxi, like, yeah. Exactly, no. because before I used to go to Duxi. Before no. that, when I was not practicing, I used to go to Duxi, mm -hmm. but it was more of a force, you know? It was forced. No, no, no. So when I was six, exactly, when I was 16 years old, I was going to Duxi, I was memorizing like uh, half of this Amma, the first Hezb. But then again, it was not a choice, you know? It was, no. uh, I didn't really like it. So when I eventually, I stopped going there, and when I was 17, when I decided like, okay, now I want to actually like learn stuff, I want to become practice, I want to start praying, I want to start doing uh, the things I was supposed to do. Then I started memorizing for them automatically. Mm -hmm. like, I was like, okay, now we're gonna start today. Then I started, and I was starting. You know when, it, you know when the, um, people start reading in, uh, what's that called? Trans, like the phonetic mm, script. You phonetic, know, like, yeah, English yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So I had this Somali Ma'adi, and uh, I used to I, every week. I used to like, so I start so I started with Surah Fat, having Ikhlas, and then he noticed every time I was reading, I was making major mistakes. Mm. And, he, and like one day he was like, why don't you just learn Arabic? No. <laughs> I was like, is that, I was like, is that an option, you know? <laughs> is that even possible? No. And he was like, why don't you just learn, uh, because you're making mistakes every time. Uh, I was making like, because uh, the, the, the phonetic script doesn't have any tajweed rules in the minute. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have any tajweed, so you make, you're going to make tajweed rules. Even if you're the best English reader, you're going to make the tajweed rules. Yes. Yeah. So I was making major mistakes and the, my teacher was like, you should just learn Arabic. Just, you should just start. Then um, what happened was this happened very interesting. Mm. The, we had the Duxi wasn't actually in a mosque. It was at, his, uh, at, at someone's house. Mm. And the, the owner of the house, he was like, "Yo, come here, sit with me." And the owner, he's not the ma'alim, he's just the owner of the house. Like, he says, after the class, he will sit with me. Come, I'm gonna teach you how to read Arabic. I'm mm. like, all right, cool. Let's, let's do this. Then basically, the only thing he did is he learned me how to read Alif Ba'ata. Mm. And then when I saw that, I was like, this is so easy. <laughs> That's the whole Arabic language. Yeah, like, he just, he just learned me the first three and how to connect it with the harakat. Mm. This is the harakat. And he said, this is how it works. 
And I was like, oh, this is actually pretty easy. You know, it's not even hard. Mm. So I started doing it by myself. So I checked this site called MedinaArabic.com. It, it, it teaches you how to read Arabic. I followed the course, like 20 lessons. And uh, after that, I started, I kept going to Duxi. I just uh, automatically switched from doing the uh, ph phonetic mm. to Arabic. So the surahs I knew, I just started reading in Arabic. No. And I started reciting and memorizing in Arabic. And that's how I started with the script. Not actually the language, but just like the reading and writing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, this is actually way more easy than I thought. Like, because everyone just screaming, it's hard, you know? No. It's hard. No. And uh, this and that. So that's the beginning part. Mm. That's the first stage. And then the second stage is like also very, uh, pretty similar to the sort of Nasiha. I was like, when I was, I was um, at that time, I was memorizing a lot. So I was going very fast. I remember so, uh, I mm. skipped the uh, Surah Baqarah. Mm. And then I went to, I skipped the whole Mus'haf and went to Surah Baqarah. And I was thinking, so and then there's this site called corpus.org.com which teaches you word for word translation. Mm. I just started opening that up every every day. Every time I memorize the ayah, I open that up and check the words up. Mm. Every time. So I memorize the ayah, I check the words, memorize the ayah, I check the words, memorize the ayah, I check the words. And all of a sudden I was like, okay, I, I've seen Jam like 15 times, I know what that means. No. I've seen this word 15 times. And before you know it, you know so many words. Like it goes so fast. And then I was like, okay, there was a, a chance at the a University of uh, uh, Niamey, which is a city close to my uh, neighborhood, which they were offering Arabic classes. Mm -hmm. It was like MSA, you know, these MSAs at universities, this is a Muslim organization. Yeah. They did this. So I was like, okay, might as well join. I joined and um, I started I started attending the classes. And uh, I started attending and the te uh, there was a teacher there and she made it, she could speak French. English, Dutch, and Arabic. Mm. And she would explain the class in, in English, uh, in, in English and Dutch, because we had four students. Mm. And I was like, whoa, this is like, well, this is amazing, you know? No. And, I was like, and she was explaining it so easy, which made me understand. And uh, it was very sad that after six months, the class stopped because she was studying, uh, it was a teacher, the teacher was studying, uh, she was studying uh, for a doctor's degree, mm. for medicine. So she didn't have time to teach us. So I was like, after that, I stopped for three months and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna pick it up myself. So I, I, I downloaded the Medina books and from there on, I just finished the Medina books, one, two, or three. I finished them. And uh, what helped me a lot in this journey was that I, I kept having, uh, after that first Ma'alim, I had only Arabic speaking Ma'alim. So that Ma'alim left and I, after that, I had Moroccan, only had Moroccan teachers, Moroccan Maghribis. Mm -hmm. So the Maghrib, they, they, uh, most of them can't speak Dutch here because they come from Morocco straight away. No. And then I was forced to speak in Arabic with them because when I memorize, I do a siddha and I have to say what I'm reading and they just talk to you random. And it makes you like force, it forces you to implement what you learned in the classes. So I, I, I actually learned Arabic at home with the Medina course, but I practice it all like in the classes with the teachers. Mm. And that's like, that's what I did. And I did lots of stuff actually. So. You should just ask me questions because I did, I, I did lots of stuff. Because no. this sounds very easy, but in real life, I was stopping, I was starting, I was stopped, I started. I did this. Yeah. Uh, I start. I thought maybe I should Arabic being a dick, and then I was like, no, I should just keep, keep doing Medina Arabic. Yeah. And then I thought, and then I started Ajmamiya before I finished Medina Arabic, and then I was like, no, I can do Qatar in the da, I can do it. <laughs> and then I stopped doing that. And so it is a bit of a, it sounds very like, so that's. Right now. That's exactly what Nastiha and, and I were talking about as uh, as in like is is enjoyable to do your quote unquote own study self studies but uh but it's that thing that you don't have a you know a structure you a don't system. have a, yeah, yeah that you follow even though you yeah. could but most of the times when you by yourself you tend to to want to do a bunch of things so exactly you tend to yeah that, yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want it to, to cut you, but for those who don't know what Duxi is, because to be honest, I, oh, the yeah. first time I heard about it is, is with Nastiha. So for those who don't know what Duxi is, it's basically Madrasa or Qur Quranic mm -hmm. school for, uh, for in the Somali dialect, I guess. And then I wanted to, to as well add yeah. to what you said in terms of the phonetic, uh, you know, memorizing the Quran in a phonetic way. I did that for like a few suar before I went to Egypt. For the you know Qisar mm -hmm. of Suar and mm -hmm. the short ones, and then I went to to Egypt. I, I had this Libyan 
teacher, and I started reciting what I knew from what I memorized in phonetic. He was like, "What is is La- that even Quran? What is that? <laughs> like, what are you reciting? Yeah. You know." <laughs> So, uh, and because it was, he, it was by myself. The whole Makharaj al huruf it's like no Makharaj al huruf it's just like English alphabet, yeah. Ar- Arabic words, it it's doesn't crazy. make sense. It's crazy as well because my parents, they, mainly my mom, she's Spanish, she accepted Islam like years ago, basically. Mm-hmm. But um, all she knows is like, ad- du- ad- you know, the du'as in, yeah, 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 yeah. in, um, in phonetic, so... You know, she would say like, Allahumma, whatever. And, uh, you know, when I was younger, my, my father would say like, yo, if this happens to you, then say this and he will give me something. Of and course. I'm like, what the heck does that even mean? And now, then when I learned Arabic, I came back and, and I, I would hear my parents say that and it will be something completely different, you know? Yeah. So this is a big... It's like transformation. Now, yeah. this is a big yeah. warning to those who... Or starting out, don't you ever try and memorize anything in phonetical, uh, yeah. you know what I mean, phonetical. Um, it's, a, it's something like, people think it's like a blessing when you, the, the books came out in Holland and it's like if they have this just Amma and mm. they have in Dutch translation and in phonetic and people think, oh, this is so nice, so good. But it actually just, it keeps you behind, you know, you no. shouldn't even start with it. Because if you, you memorize in that it. way as well, it's hard to remove it out of your head. Yeah. Hundred no. It's like being addicted to something and being hard to to remove it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but anyways, I, uh, I wanted to ask you what you know before you started when you decided that you wanted to learn Arabic. Mm-hmm. And before you started, what was the like you know the main frustrations that you was experiencing not knowing Arabic? Mm, the main frustrations, to be honest, um, not understanding du'as was very annoying. Mm. Very, very, very frustrating because you learn the du'a and then the Dutch translation, the main, I'm going to tell you the two main frustrations I ever had was one, I remember the first time ever in my whole life I opened Surah Baqarah in Dutch. I remember it like today, I was mm. like 15 years old. And I was like, today I'm going to start reading the Quran. Like I was just like, I was, I was by myself, I was thinking from today I'm going to learn what's in this book. And I opened it up and I opened Surah Baqarah, the Dutch translation. We had this book at home. Mm. And I opened it up and I read it and I didn't understand anything. Literally, not one <laughs> sentence. That's what I said yesterday to the brother in yeah. Hanif. I learned it. I, I tried reading in Spanish actually and I didn't understand anything. Yeah. And, I, and so you read it and you read it and I was like, yo, wait, this, this sentence is coming back two times. Is there something wrong with this translation? Because yeah. I repeat, right? No. So I, I repeat in Surah Baqarah, I see I, it comes and it looks uh, like, uh, it looks a lot like the ayat of uh, Bani Israel. Mm. And it comes back a couple of times, so the same, almost the same as the ayat. And then I read it and I was like, wait, wait, did I just find out that these sentences copied? So I'm, I was sec- checking the ayat in Dutch and I was like, wait, it just said the same thing here. It's the same. <laughs> I remember, like, I was, it was very annoying. Like, I was like, but listen, I want to understand this, but I can't, you know? It's like, all the stuff and the du'a, I couldn't understand them as well. So that was a big reason for me to learn Arabic. And I remember when I was there, I finished memorizing Surah Baqarah. And I, uh, I, was, uh, I was just uh, random listening to Qasir Sa'adi. Uh, and I was just learning a bit more of the meanings. And then I was like, well, this is like complete, cause, and I think it was the Tafsir Sa'adi which says like, uh, the, which like, says like the order of the Surah, like, mm. like the subject in Surah Baqarah. Mm-hmm. And then you see the structure, right? And I was like, this structure I could never ever ever see if I read it in, in Dutch. I could never even, no. you have to be a genius to be able to see that. No, 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 no. SubhanAllah. Especially in the beginning, as you see like, oh, it's tough first. It's about the Mu'mini, and then it's about the description of the uh, disbelievers, mm. and some uh, family of disbelievers, and then it's about the uh, description of uh, the Munafiqeen. And then you, in Dutch, to be honest, I could never, I could never see that. Mm, 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 mm. I couldn't see it. Yeah, it's hard. So that was a big frustration, not understanding. And I have a, this thing in me, which I don't, I hate the feeling that um, when I don't understand something, it makes me like very, very irritated. No. So I'd like to understand, but after I have to sing, I need to understand. Mm-hmm. So, do you memorize Quran as well? Yeah, I memorize Quran right now. Um, I started when I was 17 and 24 right now. But uh, we've had like, a, because we're in the West, we don't have like 
there's not many, there's no marakis or something. It's just like mm -hmm. Imam is in a masjid and he, you just ask him to teach you and he teaches you. Mm -hmm. And then the Imams usually just go away after six months, right? No, no, And no, then, no. yeah, then they... you should start over, you yeah, find a new teacher after three months. So I did that like for like the past seven years. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that like, I, I memorized the total like 11 to 12 juice, mm -hmm. but it could have gone way faster. But... I, I, I'm, I'm, I have a teacher right now, he's, he's got an ijazah and qira'ah, the 10 qira'ah. Mm. And alhamdulillah, I'm, uh, I'm studying with him right now. Taib, so you you are more or less around Furqan, yes? So I'm from, I mean, Luk yeah, Furqan. No, so it's Baqarah, so it's the other side. Oh, so you actually went back to, and you just started from Baqarah? Yeah, when, okay. I was, uh, finished, when I finished the Amah, I was like, you know what, I can take the challenge, you know? People no. were like... So hard, so hard, and I can do this. So I, when I think Surah Baqarah, I was like, oh, this is, this is nice. I like long ayat. It's more easy to memorize. And, um, yeah, that's true. Uh, it's very, it's like people will say it's way harder, but because it, when I learned the grammar, it was like, I, could, I, I know, I, I could just feel like how it's going to end. I know this. It's, it, mm -hmm. I, I, do, I know this. Yeah. So it's very easy to memorize long ayat. And um, so now I'm at Surah Yunus. Yunus. I remember as well when I, I was in Al Azhar, right, in uh, Kulliyat mm -hmm. Sharia, in Faculty of Sharia, mm -hmm. in second year, and we had to memorize this for Surah Baqarah. But I was memorizing. I was going to a merkaz. Subhanallah. What I what I miss the most from Egypt is that merkaz, merkaz al Haramain. For, so for whoever who's go, whoever who's listening to this and is going to Egypt or is in Egypt, if you want a good place mm -hmm. to memorize Quran, go to Haramain. Haramain mm -hmm. is is in Mantiqa al Tasia. Okay. If you go to, if you are in Mustafa Nahas, coming from coming from from down the city, from downtown, basically going up towards Ashir, you get to Akhir Al Metro. In Akhir Al Metro, you take a right and you ask for Masjid Al Haramain. That Masjid, and as well, it's really exclusive. Like it's hard to get in there as well. If they see, okay. basically they they will choose you basically. But um, but yeah, I was going there and we. You know, they tell you to start from from Juz Amma because yeah. uh, because it's harder and then it gets it gets easier. And so I went back to the Sheikh and I said, I have exams in the university. I need to memorize Surah Al Baqarah. Can I go to Surah Al Baqarah and then come back? He said, No, 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 no. You can't. You can't. You can't. Wow. Then Alhamdulillah, uh, you know, I managed to to let him to let me do it. But he said, Okay, you memorize by yourself. You don't memorize in the markets and then you come back. So of course. So I memorized that. Uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, and I was memorizing the long ayat, which is basically s stories, as, you, as long as you understand what's going on. That's not, and I was exactly, like, then it's easy. It's way easier than, <laughs> than just, I'm my, If you understand, you, you can follow the structure, you know, okay, the second ayat is probably, it's about this, you no, can like feel it, you know? No, 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 when you remember, okay, yeah, and then he did this, and wa jaa, wa dahaba, and then, no, exactly. no, no. Yeah, if you just follow the story, basically. Exactly, exactly. I agree 100%. No. It becomes easier. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how do you manage? Obviously, you was young, so I guess you was, uh, you was living in your, your parents' house. Was you going yeah, exactly. to school at the same time, working? Yeah, I was going to... Uh, what actually happened is uh, I was studying. Uh, I was studying... Uh, I, uh, I, was in, I was in high school, Dutch high school. And that's when I started with the Arabic uh, alphabet. Mm. And um, as soon as I went to the university, uh, what happened is there was, a, there was a time frame where I was, I had a, a year between off. Mm. And in that year, I just did everything I could do. So mm. that year, I went full time almost. So what I did is I finished um, the, the beginning of the first book, the end of the first Medina book, and I did the second book, and I did the third book. And at the same time, I was listening every day. Mm -hmm. So I was listening. And what helped me a lot was uh, I listened a lot to the uh, Durus of uh, Sheikh Nur on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I listened to the cassette recorders and I just like, uh, so I just finished random. So it didn't, it didn't, I didn't really care what I was listening to, uh, if it was Tafsir or if it was like, um, if it was like uh, Aqeedah or it was like, I was just listening to it, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. So uh, I even listened to the, like the random to the Ashraf uh, Ajal. We had the first five, six lessons. I was just listening to that, just following the conversation. So I listened to that a lot, a lot, a lot. So when I, as soon as I uh, that like it kickstarted me. As soon as I could understand what Shaitan was saying, the other stuff wasn't so hard. Mm -hmm. 
So that so that was a major like a major. So what I also used to do is I used to like buy books which were like which were the, were, were the cassette recorders, uh, which, uh, the books which I could find the cassette recorders of on YouTube. Got you. So some stuff, for example, for example, you find like the audio is in the same pace as the book itself. No. So you can read along. So, so there's channels. Well. So you're saying that there's channels where they teach the f the full book basically. They or they have uploaded all the durus of, of yeah, the machine. Yeah, exactly. Taif. So I used to. I, there's a qina on YouTube. It's called like I think it's something called Ibn Arthaymin on Arabic. And then it has like a playlist of like everything. So I used to listen to random like I'm into Ahkam like every, like mm. a random bab I was interested in. I would just, it didn't really. Uh, interest me what I was listening to no. as long as I, I, I would find it interesting enough to listen it doesn't matter what book what level I would just listen to it and I would just like do that a lot so I did that like a lot and also a uh, second thing but that was uh, more of an advanced stage is yeah. that somebody advised me to listen to um, this thing called uh, <laughs> what is it <laughs> it's like a, it's the Egyptian radio okay it's like an Egyptian radio show, and it, it, it's like they, they, they speak in Fusha, and they tell, they tell stories of like uh, 1,001 Arabian nights. Gotcha. And, and they tell the stories, and it's in Fusha, and the conversations are so cool, which makes it like, it's very, it helped me a lot. But that's like this year. I didn't do that before. Before, I was just listening to lots of cassette recorders, trying to look up words, using, uh, trans if, I check, if I check my like favorite, like, most visited website, it says like the, the Al Ma'ani and stuff, you know? Yeah. I always <laughs> see that. I always go to that one. Exactly. Al Ma'ani so, in Arabic, yeah. huh? Exactly. So, right now, if I check my thing, it says this website called Context Reverso, which like gives you like English words instead of the Arabic ones, mm -hmm. and like Al Ma'ani, which I mostly use. So, um, yeah. So, so, what would be yeah. what would be the three main things that has helped you the most to become fluent in Arabic right now, as in understanding, reading? Uh, I would say, I would say uh, staying like in connection with the language is very important. I see many people, they uh, follow, I've, okay, me for example, I, I learned Arabic not so much in a classroom, right? Mm -hmm. I learned it in a classroom because I was following my teacher speaking Arabic, so of course that's that part. But the Nahwa and stuff, I didn't teach from, from, uh, from uh, uh, the beginning stage of Nahu learning Nahu, that was not for the teacher. So what helped me a lot was consistency. Yeah, like the main, the main three things that you say, it helped, it helped you to, uh, to become okay, fluent, so you know? First thing was like staying consistent, which is like a major thing. I was like, when I, me, I always had a rule is uh, I'm never going to stop learning Arabic. So it was like, and I count like lots of things in in Arabic. When I say I'm studying I'm doing Hib, I see it as doing Arabic. I'm like, okay, I'm doing Hib, I'm staying connected with Arabic. I'm mm -hmm. doing something with Arabic. Okay, I'm listening to something. It's in Arabic. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm, I'm no. still learning Arabic. So it was like I had this rule, which was like, it, can you, whatever you're can doing. Can you make sure you're in the middle of the frame? Okay, wait. Let me just try this. The iPhone. So wait, like that. There you are. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there was a rule which was like. I have to stay, I have to keep on doing stuff with Arabic, all mm -hmm. right? I will never stop. And another, another thing that helped me was like, um, is like that I had to, uh, it had, I, had, it had, I, I always, I never made it boring. Like, it, I always make sure like I was motivated enough. Mm -hmm. In, uh, so for example, uh, when I learned, when I was, for example, uh, what motivated me a lot, for example, is when I lear learned a lot of new words, and then I would like start reading the Quran again, and then I was like, whoa. I can like understand so much more and it keep me I need the small motivation boost. No. Because learning Arabic it makes you feel like one day you feel like I can't I don't know anything and the other day you feel like I know everything. No. You know, no. It's a very weird feeling. Like one day you you read a book and you're like, yo, I can speak Arabic, I'm fluent. And then the next day you'll see poetry and you're like, I can't speak Arabic. Yeah. I don't know any Arabic. But this is like in English as well. I mean if you read a book in I don't know, in neuro neuro linguistics. You'll yeah. be like, oh, I don't understand English. But then if you read a book on the story of whatever, you know. Yeah, exactly. You'll <laughs> understand. Yeah. So, uh, exactly. So, that, that's, that thing, like, the, the, the keep yourself motivated. It's a very important. You have to keep yourself motivated. So, uh, and I always tend to, like, uh, make, for example, what I'm doing right now, I ask the imam if I could translate the khutbah for him. Hmm. 
So I translated, I translated the khutbah now. And I was translating for a while, for the last couple of weeks, I was translating two khutbahs at the same time. So mm-hmm. I would send one off. And the last three ones, I did it myself. So one I sent to another person. And those small things, they help, they help a lot because it just forces you to just uh, learn more vocabulary, yeah. exercise of translation. So I would just, even though I was not in the market, I would always make sure I had enough to do, you know? Mm-hmm. So gotcha. that's something I would like. That, that's something definitely like, yeah. No, I'm so... And the third thing is like, immerse yourself. You have to immerse yourself. Like, just throw yourself in it as if, as if you're, uh, as if like, like for example, right now, um, I can show you, like, I have like notes right here. Mm-hmm. And like my notes, random notes is just written in Arabic. No. So I do that, like I just write random stuff. Mm-hmm. I can make sure that like I'm using it, I'm making sure like I'm staying connected with it. Um, um, I went, for once, I went all extreme and I changed my whole YouTube language to English, to Arabic. I changed my phone language to Arabic. I changed like, uh, I said to myself, I'm not gonna, uh, every kind of entertainment which I'm gonna involve myself in, it has to be something with Arabic. No, no, no. I'm gonna, I don't wanna mix, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the, the reason why I was asking you that is because you said you used to hear, you used to listen a lot, is because, you know, what I give to my students. In, in the beginning of the program, once they join, I make sure that they they have this hanged up or on their wall. And it basically says that there's only three things that, that matters. Throughout your mm-hmm. whole journey, there's only three things that matters. Memorizing new vocabulary, mm-hmm. hearing yeah. it being used, and yeah. using it yourself. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? I so agree. this is why I was trying to, I was trying to see if you would say the, the same thing because kind of what you said is is this, but a little bit more like specific. Yeah. And I mean, it comes down to this, in, as you said, to emerge yourself, basically hearing it being used, memorizing on a daily basis 100%. and using it yourself. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, and I mean, that's something that I was nervous about in the beginning when I went to, to Egypt, I was like, how am I gonna stand the teacher explaining me something if he, if I don't know Arabic and he only knows yeah. Arabic, how is that gonna happen? But I mean, you know, this is exactly how I learned French as well, exactly how I learned English. Exactly. It's just how you learn, how any human being learns a language, basically. That's true. No. That's 100% true. I actually experienced this myself. When I finished the Medina books, uh, I, the Medina books, they, you lack a lot of vocabulary when you finish it still. You lack a lot of vocabulary because you're mm-hmm. just, if you go through it like me, I went through it fast. I like the fast method, just like just doing like three lessons all the time, like going very fast with the book, learning all the nahr, all the stuff. And then the end you finish and then you're like, wait, I don't know the vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Because so I mean, I that, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think so, that the Medina books, well, um, I, I've looked, Look, I, I didn't study them myself. I, I studied uh, Al Arabiya Bayn Adik, but uh, we used to have like students from the from from the Ma'ahad in 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 Medina. They used to come to to Egypt yeah. in summertime because they they said it's not enough. Like Medina books is not enough for us. And I mean, I've seen it myself. So for, like I have even okay. students who for who speaking. finished finished the three books of Medina yeah. and still can talk. Yeah, that's 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 hundred uh, percent. Uh, that's hundred percent something. Because uh, I teach Medina books right now, and I'll just say, listen, the book you're learning right now is gonna help you understand. It's not gonna help you talk. All those, all the, all, it's like there. If, yeah, you have, there's stuff that you learn from this book. There's stuff you don't. So you have to. You have other sources that you're learning it from. For example, if you if you want to learn how to speak, you best start speaking today. Because there's no other. There's no other method. Mm-hmm. Just use the stuff you're learning right now, but you have to speak, 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 and that's gonna make you learn how to speak. If you think like just by doing these books, you're gonna be fluent, that's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. That's not gonna happen. After I finished the books, I had, um, I was, uh, my, when I switched to my. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for example, when, when, I know, when I noticed when I started learning with my uh, more often teachers, yeah, uh, I worked with them, and I was, he, was, he was teaching us like random stuff to see it, and uh, we did a bit of the tweak as well, and then I noticed like, whoa, this is a whole different world, it's not the same, like you speak to you, but I have to think, 
and I have to repeat that, like, uh, uh, I have to answer, I have to, everything I'm, I'm, I learned in the books, I have to do like in a, in a split second, which is a completely different skill. It's not like that. It's not the same. So mm-hmm. my sanity is speaking is a lot. very different. So people need to know. They need to have the whole program. You need to think, what do I need? What, 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 what why am I learning it? This language for? And then you have to think of what I'm going to do. Because if you want to learn how to speak and then you just learn, are sitting in books every day, that's not going to work. No, no, no. I think. Not. Taib, so... So the whole process of of learning learning Arabic, what would you say was like how long it was from from when you started all the way until you was like oh I, I actually understand now and can use it. That's a very good question. Um, I think that was because uh, uh, I wasn't in the beginning phase. I wasn't very consistent, mm. but I can I I know very uh, what what happened to me what happened with me was. When I uh, finished the first Medina book, as soon as I, as that, that year that I had off, I took the Arabic year off in between university. That year, I felt like this is the year I can actually speak Arabic. Because what I was starting to do was, I was trying to make a lot of Arabic friends. I started to use every single thing I learned in Medina book 2, I was using that. Mm-hmm. And when I, when I, I was using like, uh, like websites for translations, but I was trying to say stuff, but I felt like I could communicate that book, I could communicate everything I wanted to. At least by typing, I could do that. So that, and when I was hitting the two, I was talking so much because I think it was the back then I was stuck every day. Then at that moment, like after that was like three three years in, I guess. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't three years inconsistent. But I think it was three years in that I was like, okay, now uh, I feel like uh, um, I can actually like say anything I want, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it. But, I wouldn't say it takes three years ago because I had friends that I advised that you should do, the, do it like this and they did it and they could speak in like a year, they could say anything they wanted. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So it depends. Yeah, definitely. I would say if you, if you, like if you focus on it and you give it a good one hour per day, it's one year. You know? But yeah, seriously, yeah. like consistent, everyday, relentless, persistent. I've seen it. No. No, I've no. seen uh, what you're saying right now. I've seen. Uh, I had a brother who was a convert, and what he did literally was okay. He was memorizing so uh, He was just converted, right? Mm. In Ramadan, I think just before Ramadan, he converted, and uh, literally in six months, you could already communicate. Like you could start communicate. Mm-hmm. And, and what he was doing was just memorizing, 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 learning vocabulary, learning vocabulary, vocabulary, doing the beginning of book one, just learning every lesson. And he was having like three, three hours a day. I think he said I'm doing three hours a day. And before you knew, before I knew, I could, it was just converted, but I could speak in Arabic and by text. I was that. Mm-hmm. And he, but he was like, he was like, I think the, the main picture right here is that many people think they postpone the idea of learning Arabic, and I think I can only learn as soon as I go abroad. You know? No. That's a major. No, 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 subhanAllah. Taib, so what were the, the main books that you used throughout your, your journey? Okay, so the main books I used. Uh, throughout my journey, uh, let me see, let me see. Um, so basically, what I did was uh, I used the MedinaArabic.com website. It's a site where you can learn, where they put all the Medina Arabic books digitally on the website. I used that to learn how to read. Uh, once I learned how to read, I was starting with the Medina books, so I, I did those to learn all the grammar I needed. As soon as I finished that, um, what I learned from the most was actually then listening to other recordings. Mm. Just listen, listen to as much as you can. I would say uh, listen as much as much as much as you can. I listen. I, I don't know how many hours I listen, but I listen a lot. And, uh, so that was a very good. Like I would never, never regret that. And um, well, the thing about listening is people make it. You don't have to make it hard. Is just put the recording on when you walk from home to the city, when you walk to home to school, when you walk from home to just put the recording. That's what I used to do. Like when I walk and I go to university, it's like two hours. Put the recording on. Just no. random dots. So mm-hmm. It doesn't even matter. Just put the dots on. It's better if it's like in the structure of book. But just put it on. Try and listen to it. Uh, if you already learned this specific subject in English or Dutch, you have a plus one because you know what it's going to talk about. No. So that helps a lot. So just listen, 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 listen. Um, and, uh, the, and after that, I, I tried to read the Sanini by myself. Mm. So I did this. And the first thing I did when I finished reading books is I said to myself, it doesn't matter what, but I'm going to learn how to read books. So I went to the bookshop 
and I bought uh, like uh, Kitu uh, Wasatiya, I bought like Tuhfat al I bought Kish Shubhat, I just bought all these random books, right? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you know what? And then I remember the guy behind it, uh, the, behind the thing at the store, he said to me, can you read this? Who's going to explain it to you? I was like, I can't read it now, but I will be able to read it next year. <laughs> And he was laughing, the guy was laughing, like, how are you going to do this? I was like, doesn't matter, don't worry about me, I'm going to do it. No. And, the, and the, there was another guy behind the tail, and he said, yo, listen, don't, don't, don't mess with this guy, he's going to do it. He was, he was a Somali, it was a, actually, it's Meshit Rahma, it's Meshit Rahma in Birmingham. It's mm. called Meshit Rahma, it's a Somali mosque, and they have a mix over there. And the guy from the corner tail was like, he said, there were two guys, and one said, how are you going to do this? He was pessimistic. I was like, oh, he's going to do it. No, no, no. So basically, after that year, uh, I made for myself uh, uh, a as a book to my team. It worked out. So in that year, I learned from about to see I made sure I was looking up every word and that. So that people need to just, it's not just only about Nahu, like, it's a lot about it. Most of it is, so as you said, it's true, it's about vocabulary. Mm. It's about the most uh, thing that frustrates the most is it's the vocabulary. I'm not gonna lie, it's the vocabulary, it's the, like the thing that makes your head like when you when I when I started like um reading uh, learning Arabic vocabulary in Arabic, that's mm. when I that's when I felt like I learned Arabic the most. No. Because at that moment it was like it says for example, I remember one day I was learning I was checking this book, uh, I was checking, I was checking, I was like, it said like, um, this, 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 it means, ma'abayna, wait, it says in Arabic definition, ma'abayna, I don't know, you think, you think, oh, it means, I don't know, this, and that's when you feel like, oh, I know Arabic, I can understand the definition, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. Yeah, so I remember, I was like, the word twilight, I think, what's the word twilight again? Twilight in Arabic. Um, it's, in, it's a word in the uh, 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 Not ufuq, but oh, even the word ufuq. I was looking at the word ufuq and it says like, it, it, it describes the word ufuq in Arabic and then you hmm. learn read it and you're like, oh my god, I know how to understand this. Even twilight in English, I don't even know what it is to be honest. <laughs> twilight is like, it's like the between the red, when the sun goes down and you see like the, the, the two lights come, the light okay. in the day and light in the night. In Arabic, it's, it's it's a word that comes to just I looked it up once, mm. and uh, and that's why I, I I know it. But anyways, that's what that's when I felt like uh, you got me. Be the most you got me. Uh... And checking it up in Arabic, looking it up in Arabic. Even that's what I'm doing right now. That's currently what my plan is right now. Sheikh Abdul Hamad Hassan has this um, has this. Uh, oh, Shafat, yeah. Yes, yeah, so Abdul Rahman Hassan, and from uh, that's now in Dubai, but I used to be in England. He has this manhaj in learning like. Uh, Tafsir, and he says first you need to learn this book called the um, Nazm in Mushtarakat from Mushtarakat in Quran, and then you go to Kalimat al Quran Tafsir al Mubayyan from Muhammad Hussein, and then he says you need to do um, Tafsir al Arib or something, something like that. But it's all about learning the words of the Quran, mm-hmm. and that I'm doing that right now, and it's helping me a lot as well. Mm-hmm. طيب, um, so. So obviously, all of this journey, it was, it was quote unquote by yourself. Um, I can't actually say that because um, uh, I but, did. I, it's not completely by myself because the last year I started with uh, this year. I st- beginning of this year I started doing Nadul uh, Ajrumiya, mm. and I had a teacher that explained me that. But um, so I memorized the book. I memorized like seventy percent, I think, right now. Mm. And uh, and I started with him, and I we're gonna finish. Uh, next month we're gonna pick it up again, but he's a student that was in Mauritania as well, mm-hmm. and um, w- I did it with him, and we did like the first two babs, but we did like 15, 12 lessons for just the first 30 baits, just like 15 <clears throat> lessons, so uh, that helped me a lot, so uh, I didn't do it all by myself, so I'm doing nothing, nothing, uh, nothing I'm doing with him, so that's... How, how does he start? How does this novel start? Okay. طيب. It's like it. Yeah. Now, so yes. um, yeah, I'm, I was just thinking about here, Mauritania is crazy, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
They memorize everything. They put everything in an album and they memorize it. But it's the exactly. best way to keep all the rules in the in your head. I love it to be honest because right now, uh, let me just put this in the middle. Right now, uh, the nothing, the bait I I because uh, I teach Medina Arabic, right? So the bits I already know. Sometimes I try to like use it in the class, just, even before I know the shara. I know like what, how we can use it, right? Because I know the Arabic. So I'm like, okay, uh, you want to know the alamat of the blah, blah, blah? I know him. I'll just use another man. I'll say, okay, that's one, that's one, that's two, that's three, you know? No, no. It no. helps a lot, to be honest. To start yeah, because plus to teach it as well. Good. Yeah, exactly. So mm. because if you want to know the alamat, you can't memorize all the alamat of all the marfu'a and so you, you, you can't. It's hard to memorize them without knowing the nazam. It's easy to know it, just to understand it. It's not hard mm. to learn all the alamat of the Arab. It's, just, it's just easy to understand and to use. But then to be explaining all of them to someone, how are you going to memorize that? You need a book. Or if you memorize another of them, it's come very easy. And you just mm -hmm. use another. No, yeah. definitely. So, okay, the last two questions. How of an yeah. impact has had learning the Arabic language in your life? That's a very good, uh, I would say a major impact, major impact, mm -hmm. um, because it helped me. Uh, I always wanted to learn how to understand the Quran, and I felt like there was something like that was like uh, a barrier between reaching that goal. That it felt, it felt like you can never actually really understand. Because I'm not, I don't, when I say understand the Quran, I don't like what people, lots of people, when I say they understand the Quran, they know the explanation, which mm -hmm. is not enough for me. I want to know the actual meaning of the ayah. Mm -hmm. So many people, they when they're like when they like I want to learn the meaning of the Quran. And what they do is they buy an English tafsir before they even buy an English Arabic book, like an Arabic book. Mm -hmm. What I would say, buy an Arabic book, learn Arabic. But many people they think oh, I want to learn the meaning of the Quran, so they just buy to see like a few ten volumes in English before they even start with uh, any Arabic. So I would say my my wish was always like to learn how to understand the Quran, and learning Arabic is helping me. To, to, to get closer, to see that good goal, like I can see it now, you know? It's, no. like, it's not a dream anymore. I can actually see myself knowing all the Muqaddaq and Muqaddaq in a couple of years, inshallah, no. and learning all the. Um, and, and I have a book here from Abu Bakr al-Jazayi, the Tafsir, and it, I read the beginning part of it, and I can see, like, if I would finish it, I could actually understand the Quran. Mm -hmm. Like, which is an amazing idea. I started, I started with so fast. I'm like, whoa, if I would do this, I could actually understand the Quran. No. The whole Quran, which makes like, it's, which I feel like learning Arabic made me able to to do this and understand the khutbah, which is a major plus. And to be honest, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's like a big blessing, you know? No, no, no. Yeah. Taib, and the last, <clears throat> the last question, uh, what would be your advice for the person that knows and acknowledges the importance of learning Arabic? However, for whatever reason, having or he didn't start yet. You know, I like this. There was this, um, this Ustad, Ustad, uh, Somali Ustad in the UK, and he said a quote, and his quote was so cool. He said, Stop being a tourist in your own religion. Why, you want, why would you want to be a tourist? You already know you're going to be Muslim for the rest of your life. <laughs> so there's no point in postponing this. You already, you already acknowledge Islam. You know you're going to be Muslim to the end of your days, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So what's the point in being a tourist? Or you study for four years, five years, six years, and shall you understand this language very well. So there's no point in in, in putting someone between. What, what I didn't tell Farid today is something that happened to me, which made me kickstart my Arabic uh, studies again after I came up in Lindsay. Is that I went to the mosque and I asked this guy. I wanted to speak to the imam. The imam could only speak in Arabic. And I asked his brother to translate for me, but he was very busy. I, was, I kept bothering him. I said, "Bro, can you translate? Please, can you translate this?" I really need this question to be translated, please. And he was very busy, and I was like, you know what? Why do I even want this? You know, <laughs> this is so annoying. I should just learn. Like, I should learn this language and just and ask my question myself. No, no, no. So don't be a tourist in your own religion. It doesn't. It takes. If you know, if you already, if you're already multilingual, then you have to ask yourself. And the Yom Qiyam, like you already learned four languages or three or two or no. Are, so what's the point in adding another one and just being able to understand the Quran and uh, understand the khutbah? Because what's your excuse? You know, someone said in the age of information, being ignorant is your own choice. You know, you, if you, there's the information is out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to understand the khutbah or your du'as that you say every day. It is possible. It just takes a couple of years of your time, and it's the best investment you can ever make. Definitely, definitely. 
Taiba Hi, Barakallah Fik for your time. And uh and you know to, to, to share your story with, with us. I'm pretty sure that everyone will benefit inshallah. And uh and yeah, Akhi, for all the I mean al ilkhwa for all the viewers. Uh I'm sorry today, man. It's Sunday and I'm 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 tired already. But uh, yeah. But yeah, hey, uh, are we gonna speak Arabic? No. Nah? Are we supposed to speak Arabic? No. Nah? Are we supposed to speak Arabic? نعم خلاص إبا إبا إن شاء الله نكمل و ونغلق هذه الدورة بالعربية فإن شاء الله يعني ما أدري حد ما سألك الآن نقول طيب طيب أنت أغلق هذه هذه الدورة لأنني خلاص تعبت واو أوكي you can put it on me أوكي لإخوتي لإخوتي المستمعين والمستمعات أرجو أن تست أرجو أن أن استفدتم من هذه هذه الحلقة وإن شاء الله أرجو من الجميع أن من الذين لم لم يبدأوا بالتعلم العربية أن يبدأوا اليوم و يو نو تو سويف أني مور سي نو تو سوفا ديز نو سوفا أني مور ديز نو أم غوين تو أم غوين تو إن شاء الله يو شود جست ستارت تودي أن إن شاء الله ابدأوا اليوم وتعلموا هذه اللغة وستكونوا إن شاء الله you know you're going to be a different person you know you're going to you're going to be a different person inshallah inshallah and for those of you who are interested in learning the Arabic language you guys can check out my personal case study down below uh, fluent in Arabic in 10 months how I did it and how you can do it from today so uh, so yeah inshallah may Allah bless us all and give us tawfiq أمين. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله خنا فيصل أيوة عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته